This is the mixing tip. The hardener and the resin is going to mix in this tip. The end is already open, but if you want it open a little more, you can take a utility knife, or in this case I'm using a chisel, and just cut it off. So now it's a little bit more open. You'll need a caulking gun with an offset opening at the front. This really isn't the correct gun, but I was able to make it work. I'm going to loosen this front up here, and that holds a stop. And that might be, I used this, so this might be epoxied in there, we'll see. I oh, know, I was able to get it out, I think. There we go. I'm giving the caulking gun a little squeeze just to make sure both materials are coming out, and they are. So now I'll attach the mixing tip. Now I'm going to put a three inch bead on this piece of scrap wood just to make sure that both materials are being mixed in the mixing tip. Okay, so now we know how to get started with the Fixo epoxy. Let's talk about why you would use it in the first place. So here is a tabletop that I built a few years ago, and as you can see, it failed. I joined the boards with biscuits and Type Bond 2, and yes, I should have used Type Bond 3, but I find using epoxy is even stronger. So the idea of the Thixo epoxy, as opposed to regular unthickened epoxy, is it's easy to use. So if you were to put epoxy on this board, it's going to drip down the sides, it's going to drip on your table. With the thickened epoxy, you can put a nice bead right on the board, and then when you join the boards together, it's not going to drip down and onto your work table. It will just leave a nice bead on the bottom that you can easily clean up by sanding away after the epoxy has dried. So now let's go ahead, we'll join these boards together, and then we'll talk a little bit about the working time. Instead of using biscuits to join these boards, I'm using dominoes. Biscuits are more of an alignment tool where dominoes are an alignment tool and also add structural strength. You can see how I can lay this board down and if that were wood glue or epoxy, the wood glue would be dripping on the table or the epoxy. So it's just very easy to use because you're not going to have that mess. When I'm joining boards, I like to have a bead on each board and one of the beads I'll spread out like I'm doing right now. I just make sure that every surface is covered with the epoxy. When I'm building a big tabletop, I like to remove the squeeze out at the top with a plastic putty knife. And I generally don't remove the squeeze out from the bottom because the tabletop is usually big and difficult to deal with. I could, in fact, deal with this, but I'm just going to let it be the way it is so we can look at it. But you can see that the epoxy is not dripping. It's going to dry just the way it is here. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this set up and periodically I'll come back and check the squeeze out and see how it's drying. And that way you'll have a good idea of the drying or working time that you have when you work on your project. Okay, I've let the epoxy dry overnight and it's completely cured. After using the epoxy, I removed the mixing tip and put the cap back on. The tip is no longer usable, so you just throw it away. As far as working time, I had been working with the epoxy for maybe 15 minutes while I glued these boards together. I checked out the consistency of it, it was still workable, and then I checked it about an hour and a half later, still workable. I checked it out almost maybe three hours later, still workable, but starting to cure, so plenty of working time. I would safely estimate that you've got at least an hour and a half of working time, which is more than enough time for most glue-ups. So now you can see I've got the squeeze out on the back of the uh, tabletop here. And to remove that, I'm just going to get the orbital sander and sand it off.